Hello, everybody. My name is Alexander Kazina, aka Cozy Bear, and I would like to cordially invite you to another installment of my Pokemon Leaf Green Critical Nuzlocke run. Kinda, we'll get into it. You can catch the show you're currently watching live on twitch.tv slash Cozy Bear Live uh, every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. EST. And when you're done with that, you can catch up on all my prior broadcasts on YouTube where they publish every Wednesday and Saturday. So yeah, after the conclusion of last week's stream, uh, I was half motivated to take a bit of a break after we very nearly got beaten into the earthy ground by the one gene leader named Koga. Uh, and I decided, you know what? I'm not going to take a break, uh, but I am going to start out tonight's stream by doing something a little bit different. Uh, what you're currently looking at right here on the right is not a game. Uh, this is Kanto Redrawn, uh, which is a kind of sub project of a kind of larger series of projects called Retro Redrawn, where basically uh, very talented pixel artists on the internet are taking uh, beloved worlds uh, from video games that we love, like The Legend of Zelda and Pokemon, and completely reimagining them using beautiful, glorious pixel art, as you can see in front of you. And so I thought it would be fun to kind of open out tonight's stream by just kind of looking over it. I don't necessarily know how long we're going to be looking at this stuff. It kind of depends on how many things we're gonna take time to kind of admire and gawk at maybe we'll find ourselves fatigued pretty quickly maybe we'll spend quite a bit of time but i don't expect that we'll be here for all that long um while we are here however uh i had my little bit of pretzel rocks music fade out a second ago let me uh turn pretzel rocks back on actually because i think that we we will want to have something in the background just to keep ourselves a little bit company when the dulcet tones of my voice are no longer reverberating in the room around me. So yeah, uh, right off the bat, we're starting right here at, of course, a town will, that will be familiar to uh, many veteran Pokemon players. This, of course, is Pallet Town. Uh, and it's interesting because there are a lot of characters in this town that don't really show up in Pallet Town or at least not in the forms in which they appear in the typical Pokemon games. Obviously, you have uh, Professor Oak right here. Uh, obviously, you have your three starters, Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle right over here. But then, right up top, we have Ash, uh, the one and only Ash Ketchum, with Pikachu and the um, distinctive Lightning Bolt Pokeball that he captures Pikachu inside of, or rather, that he receives Pikachu inside of in the anime. Um, and as you can see over here, we have Gary Oak, but it's specifically Gary Oak as he appears in uh, the Pokemon anime, not as he appears in uh, like the actual games themselves. In the games, he has kind of a bit of a different appearance. He has a kind of black leather-ish shirt, I want to say. The point is he doesn't have the purple sweater like he does in the anime, which I want to say is kind of a, a weird choice of clothing. I, I don't really quite understand it. Uh, if we look around a little bit uh, in Pallet Town here, we can see that we have two different um, uh, kind of fighter karate trainers. Uh, I thought for a second this was supposed to be Ryu, but he, he just has a red headband. I don't think he's intentionally trying to be Ryu. Uh, if we look a little bit over here to the right, uh, we can see that there is a little a shiny Charmander peeking through the trees. I'd have to imagine there are probably a lot of weird shiny Pokemon hanging out, you know, e eager to kind of surprise us. Um, if we go up a little bit further, we have some more trainers here and there. We have uh, Mr. Mime hanging out because, of course, Ash at one point in time owned a good old Mr. Mime. Um, obviously, we have the entrance to Route 1 over here, but we also have two other routes uh, leading east and west of Pallet Town that don't really lead anywhere, just to kind of show that, like, the actual kind of real version of Pallet Town would have, you know, more routes other than the one going northward. Uh, already, we're actually seeing something that kind of breaks with continuity a little bit. We have Spinarak uh, climbing up this tree over here. I don't, I don't really know what the deal is with him. Now, like, here's the thing. Geographically, we actually are located pretty, pretty close to where Kanto, uh, to where Johto is located. So I can kind of forgive 
spinner rack hanging out in this tree over here. It is still a little bit, I don't know, it breaks with continuity a little bit. Uh, if we go a little bit further north, as we can see now, uh, we have uh, good old Red uh, leading the charge going forward. And of course, he's accompanied by a Squirtle. Uh, one thing that I like here, a, a little detail that they added to this uh, redrawn map is there are these little kind of caves that Radita's are kind of hanging out in. Presumably they're dens. I like the idea that these dens are like little kind of tunnels that you can go inside of and find, but potentially treasures inside of. It feels very reminiscent of um, like the Minish Cap and how you have all sorts of like weird hidden tunnels in those games as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, another, oh, well, two, two more non-canonical spinner racks hiding out in the trees. Well, that's weird. I don't know. I, I, it would be weird if these are the only the only Johto Pokemon in this entire map. I actually wonder what other Pokemon from what other regions we'll be able to find. Uh, and as you can see, uh, here we are at Viridian City. And as you can see, this is where um, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. This is where things really kind of begin to pop off. As you can see, the design of the Pokemon Center in Viridian City is quite elaborate. Um, we have ourselves a Poliwhirl and a Poliwag hanging out here. Um, I'm not going to go to the Elite Four just yet, but again, you can see an example of a route that has been uh, much improved via this sort of pixel remaster. Lots of people hanging out doing things. Oh, we have the um, the climactic fight between Red and our rival. Uh, that, of course, resulted in my first Nuzlocke run coming to an early end. Kind of funny to see that. They actually have literally the exact same starters, which is uh, weird, to say the least. Uh, if we go back here, ooh, we have a little uh, enclosure in which um, Bulbasaur and Venusaur are hanging out. So that's kind of cool. Uh, of course, we have the uh, the tired old man or the uh, drunk old man um, per the original Japanese version. Uh, let's see here. There are so many details. I need to make sure that I don't um, spend too much time looking around here. So the gym, the gym uh, building is interesting because the design of the gym building is a purely anime design. I don't really know why they went with this weird off kilter kind of half moon shape, um, but I know that it is distinctly an anime design because, of course, in front of the gym, uh, we see Gary Oak, who is being delivered to the gym by his uh, entourage of cheerleaders uh, and their convertible. Uh, and yeah, oh, look at that. We have a little Daduo head, probably in uh, probably it was inserted into here specifically in memory of the Dodrio that passed away last time. Here we go, Viridian Forest Park. Well, this is interesting. So we kind of have like, um, I didn't even necessarily think of the route north of Viridian uh, City as being like Viridian Forest Park, but I guess that makes sense. Just kind of like a nice little picnic-y place. Oh, we have like a storm drain over here. That's cool. That's neat. Let's see. We have like the secret building over here. Uh... And as you can see, we are at uh, Viridian Forest. Okay, what the hell is going on here? They, man, I know that they took a lot of um, artistic liberties uh, w with these maps, but we have something especially odd going on with these Swoller Peas. I, I don't know, is that what we want to call them? It's uh, Swolichu and Swoller Pea. Man, I, <laughs> I, I, I've heard that apparently um, the upcoming... Uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet games are going to introduce some weird paradox versions of pre-existing Pokemon. Apparently, there's going to be a uh, fighting bug version of Vol Volcarona. I wonder if the Swoller Peas we're looking at right here are perhaps related to that version of Volcarona that we're going to get. Oh, of course, another, another anime reference. It's uh, the Butterfree that... Uh, Ash's Butterfree ran off with. It looks like it's a, a shiny Butterfree, but it's actually just a weird alternately colored one. It's another one of those weird, like, early anime kind of weirdness things. Uh, we have Diglett Cave, of course. Still kind of still kind of sucks that we were never able to get a Dug Trio. 
Wow. Wow. Let me tell you, they really, really went hard with the design of some of the cities in this. This is um so insanely dense. Oh, look at that. There's a, a Blissey over here. Okay, so it seems like we will have a fair few gold and silver Pokemon hanging out within these regions a little bit. I guess, oh, look, there's Smeargle. I guess, like, they were probably okay with some gold and silver Pokemon because you could always uh, explore the Kanto region after you beat gold and silver. <clears throat> I expect that we probably won't encounter a lot of other Pokemon from a lot of other regions. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll encounter like Meltan or Melmetal. I don't think that those two guys are out of the question. You you can obviously see like the kind of Japanese-ness of the kind of like world of Pokemon come through a lot more. Now that's this is interesting. Like obviously here we have the uh, Pewter Museum. Uh, we have the little unknowns uh, at the top of it, um, which I'm pretty sure the, the spell Museum. Yep, it's Museum. You know, it's interesting. Like in the original Pokemon games, you didn't really have like an excavation site that showed where a lot of the Pokemon fossils were obtained. Uh, and yet, lo and behold, um, you actually uh, have quite the excavation site over here. Also, uh, I guess my previous theory about uh, this not this um, map not having any Pokemon from subsequent generations is false because we have a, a very chunky, uh, chunktastic Porygon Z just hanging out here. Uh, we also have Mimikyu and uh, Duskull for whatever weird reason. I'm still kind of hung up on uh, Chonkazy or, or Porychonk or whatever you want to call him. Porychonk, that's good. That's good. I think that's good. Hell yeah. Oh, and uh, these guys completely blended in. We have two Pillow Swine here. It still is like primarily though. Um, also, wait, hold on. There's a there, there's a statue of Porygon Chonk as well. What? Why? That's odd. Uh, but in any case, it's largely just like Pokemon from Kanto hanging around here. Uh, we have the um, the route that goes a little bit uh, west, uh, or rather east of Pewter City Gym. I still get east and west confused a lot, uh, unfortunately. Um, yeah, not a lot to say here. All, I, there's so much to kind of break down in these maps. I'm not going to like make a point of picking apart every single thing. I'm a little bit, I'm curious what this girl's deal is. I wonder, like there was a lot of early weirdness in the Pokemon anime. She seems like some weird trainer that Ash and company fought early on in the show. Let's see, a lot of, a lot of snakes. Uh, Sandshrew apparently forgot his homework. Uh, we have, of course, the Pokemon Center over here just before you go into uh, Cerulean Cave and it's a horde of Zubats. Oh, we have a little, a little shiny Sandshrew over here. Now, what's this? Uh, I guess I'm, I'm going to have to assume I, I've talked about this in the past. I have not played, uh, any of the gold silver games yet or the remakes. I'm assuming that this is like an, an area that was introduced in uh, the gold and silver games. Uh, presumably this is where you can see the Clefairy dancing at night and potentially get yourself a moonstone. I, I seem to remember that being the case. Anyways, you can exit through here. I, I appreciate the little design uh, of like these weird archways that allow you to get through the cavern. Uh, there's a pretty cool battle going on here between Pikachu and, uh, Vulpix. Hmm. Oh, look at this guy. This guy definitely, he definitely fished a, a little bit more than I think he was hoping for here. That's pretty fun. I, I, I really love the way that they, they represented this one kind of patch of grass within this entire route. This is pretty clever. I, I really love this. This is probably my favorite part of this route. Uh, and yeah, we arrive at um, Cerulean City. Of course, we have the uh, the entrance to Cerulean Cave over here. <clears throat> uh, this, uh, compared to Pewter City, Cerulean City has a 
distinctively more kind of old-fashioned uh, kind of feel to it. I love the um, the top of Cerulean City Gym. I think it's pretty. It has a very kind of retro feel to it that I really kind of appreciate. Yeah, it's it's definitely a very different vibe here. Man, I love Misty. What a what a great trainer. So uh, something I, I should have mentioned at the top is that the way that this entire project was done was that each kind of route within the game was basically done by like a different pixel artist. So that's why you get to see like a very kind of distinctly different type of kind of pixel art style represented here on the route leading to Cerulean uh, City. And then in Cerulean City itself, it looks you know decidedly different but i i gotta say there are no there are no losers yet when it comes to the art styles that we've seen represented thus far in this piece um again the the, the art style that we've seen represented here in cerulean city is a little bit more old-fashioned but it's still great um that is though that is part of the reason why though like we've seen some pokemon from like feature gens represented a lot in certain parts of the games and um in other instances like here like we pretty much are just sticking almost exclusively with just like gen 1 pokemon you know different people have different opinions on what gens of pokemon should be included uh, if you look down here in the um kind of lower part of the city you can see a jigglypuff and a ditto so that's kind of neat i'm gonna go just a little bit up north to route uh 24 see a little bit what's going on here at nugget bridge i gotta say not a, not a great the, the the team rocket grunt that gives you a um a nugget for defeating nugget bridge i don't know if he's that great of a businessman i'm gonna just put that out there we have ourselves an abra hanging out being cool uh we have the many trainers uh on this route including the one that blocks that one item that you can get early if you just have him go down a little bit. Oh, we have some uh, very non-canon uh, Pokemon from subsequent generations here. We have, wow, wow, <laughs> a lot of uh, legendary Pokemon. So if I recall correctly, the reason why there are so many legendary Pokemon here from so many um, future Pokemon gens is because it was kind of like a, a long-standing Pokemon uh, rumor monger thing, kind of like Mew under the truck, that the route north of uh, Bill's house basically contains like a route that contains all sorts of rare and unusual and exclusive Pokemon that you can't get anywhere else in uh, the entire series. Um, uh, of course, the lighthouse and the giant Dragonite is a, a reference to the actual episode of the Pokemon anime uh, in which they encounter Bill. Basically, it's the first appearance of Dragonite. It's this like giant, monstrous, uh, hulking being, but Team Rocket scare it off just as Bill and company were about to kind of connect with it, which is sad and un unfortunate. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty, <laughs> I got to say, a pretty cool little uh, Easter egg that I was not really anticipating to see here. Uh, yeah, and also uh, Meltan and Melmetal as I originally was predicting we would see. So that's kind of cool. Uh, you can see here Professor Oak is uh, telling Red about uh, Shaman, clearly in reference to how you have to get Oak's letter if you want to trigger the Shaman quest in uh, Diamond and Pearl. We, we even have that one grass dark type legendary Pokemon that was introduced relatively recently over here. All right. Uh go south of cerulean city we have uh, our daycare center taking care of them pokemans uh i'm actually gonna oh look at that it's hypno hanging out doing something uh i'm just gonna temporarily avoid saffron real quick we're gonna go to the route uh east of cerulean city not not a whole lot to talk about here but there are some cool rock formations um Hmm. Hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, and finally, la uh, last but not least, we have, of course, the entrance to Rock Tunnel. It's, um, you can definitely tell that it's a pretty, uh, a place that is teeming with many a monster. I will say, pretty <laughs> intrigued by, um, 
the uh, kind of elaborate design of the Pokemon Center around here, I don't really know if it would be super economical uh, of them to build such a tall Pokemon Center out in the sticks like this. I feel like they would want to maybe do something a little bit more pared down. Ooh, here we go. Uh, we have, of course, uh, the um, uh, factory, which we have not yet visited, but which we will want to visit at some point within our Pokemon Leaf Green run. Uh, and of course, good old Zapdos just hanging out there. Seems like the impression that I get, I mean, you, you got to look at this Raichu over here in the corner. You have to imagine that it is just filling all these Pokemon with orgastic pleasure. Probably not that Magikarp. I think that Magikarp is dead, but I think everyone else here is just having a, a, a real good time feeding off of uh, Zapdos's pleasure. Uh, speaking of non-canon, uh, we have ourselves another Dragon Ball reference over here. Did you know that apparently the power of a certain Dragon Ball character uh, is over 9,000 hit points? I know, never would have believed that, but lo and behold. Uh, a little bit further south, you have the exit to Rock Tunnel. Oh, you have one of the, the, the um, berry trees, like how they're represented in the uh, red and blue games. So that's nice. Uh, of course, we have Lavender Town uh, represented in pretty spooky fashion. Jesus, what the hell is that guy doing? Dude, <laughs> bag that Pikachu up. Don't just carry him around the streets. I mean, yeah, that, it is what it is. I still can't get over how graphic that is. Um, of course, we have the route over here that is uh, south of Lavender Town, where we have, you know, just a lot of trainers hanging out with their... Uh, oh, look at that. We have a uh, flying Pikachu over here. That's kind of cool. Lots of tentacles, uh, lots of boardwalks. Uh, how, how expensive was it to set up all the boardwalks? on these routes, because I feel like it was maybe a little bit. I, I don't know if that was a great use of people's taxpaying dollars here within the Kanto region. Uh, let's go and just do a quick little detour back to Vermilion City. So this route over here, uh, hmm. I got to be honest, this is one of the more plain looking routes. I mean, it's still like visually there is so much uh, kind of going on here that I could never feasibly easily do on my own, even with years and years of experience, but it is still a little bit on the plain side. Uh, let's see here. Oh, there's so many Snorlaxes hanging out. Uh, whoa, wow, 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 wow. This is, I mean, this is quite the glow up for Vermilion City. What the hell is that? What? Oh, oh, I... I was really concerned that they had tried to insert a non-canon, uh, not ex non-existing Pokemon into this, but no, it's actually, it's just, uh, Tentacruel. I'm assuming this is probably, this is probably in reference to, uh, the one infamous episode of the Pokemon anime, where Tentacruel shows up and causes all sorts of, uh, property damage. That episode actually got briefly kind of removed from circulation because it had kind of 9-11 adjacent imagery, but I think it's it's back in rotation now. We have the um, SSN over here, as we can see. Obviously, it's not at all um, represented properly because we don't see the uh, player character rubbing the salty sea captain's back. Uh, lots, many more Pokemon and orgastic pleasure. I don't know what's going on with Muck over here. Let's see. If we go back north into uh, the Vermilion City, this is a real kind of happening city. Seems like a cool place. This guy, interesting. So the, the gym in this version of Vermilion City is kind of like a kind of like a factory. Okay, okay. Oh, also, we have Jesse and James over here. Uh, oh, this must be. I'm guessing that this is where James uh, obtains his famous Magikarp that accidentally evolves into a Gyarados at some point. Apparently they're trying to summon Zubat, man. Good luck on that one. Interesting. So we're going to the route north of Vermilion City. Wow, I love the way that this route is represented. I love the, I love how they're able to represent such a great sense of verticality in this route through 
uh, the kind of use of like shadows and waterfalls and whatnot. Also, a lot of combies over here, which is interesting. I'm not against it, though. Uh, and yeah, again, I'm going to just kind of avoid Saffron City for the time being. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, we'll start back over here. So this is the route uh, just to the west of Saffron City. Uh, where we, you know, just have another brief little chance to capture for ourselves, like another bell sprout or whatever. Saffron City, I gotta say, this place is more... You know, it's interesting. I feel like when I play these Pokemon games, I'm used to having the gym in question uh, kind of be representative of the city as a whole. But, um, Celadon City, sorry. I meant to say Celadon City. Um... Celadon City here is like a very industrious city. You know, there is like a lot of hustle and bustle going on here, and it... I don't know, I, I feel kind of mixed about it. It is good, though, that the um, the Celadon City gym has plenty of greenery around it, but I feel like it, it strikes me that Erica is probably a little bit upset about how the rest of her city looks and feels. Uh, and as we can see over here, we have... Um, like a bit, kind of like an extension of Celadon City. This is a little bit different from how it's represented in the games themselves, but, you know, I'm not really opposed to it. Uh, we have some people riding on some of those, like, non-canon kind of horsey rides at a playground. We have a, a nice little diglet slide. Um, oh, we have, a, I think, I'm assuming that's Erica training with her Oddish? Hmm. Uh, now, I got a sneak peek of this earlier, uh, but I don't feel like y'all are quite expecting just how elaborate this is going to be. So they decided for uh, this uh, kind of retro uh, Pokemon redrawn map to basically just reimagine uh, the cycling road as like a major expressway. Look at this thing. Look at how elaborate this thing is. This is insane. Hold on a sec. Let, let's go back up just a little bit. Yeah, the, the detail on this one, again, talking about really kind of conveying a strong sense of verticality, the detail here is insane. Also, we have Delibird being carried along by some uh, Stantler. Interesting. Let's see. Uh, lots of stuff going on here. We have uh, Jesse and James riding around on bicycles, probably in reference to how they used to be part of like a bike gang within the anime. Whoop. Uh, I'm not really certain what's going on here. A bunch of people in a tank are trying to shoot at someone? Did I forget about that? Oh. A bunch of people are just kind of hanging out at this kind of view of the highway, I guess. Why not? Wow, this is like one of my favorite ones. It's up there with the, the route north of Vermilion. I have no clue what's going on here. Two Hopip and a Yanma are battling what looks like if you... I, I think that's Caesar, but it's like if you merged Caesar with like Super Saiyan 3 Goku. I don't know what's going on there. And here, of course, we come to Saffron City. I, um... I mean, I can't see that they don't, they haven't represented it well. Uh, I quite like the appearance of this bad boy. Uh, once again, I very much appreciate the kind of like ornate, uh, kind of old timey design of the gym, it, keeping in uh, with tradition with how they represented some of the other gyms in the game. Uh, of course, we have the Safari Zone over here. This is like obviously, as you would expect, an enormous area. I feel like these sprites over here are very reminiscent of some of the sprite work that I remember loving back in the day from, like, the Minish Cap, for example. Well, look at that. We have ourselves, uh, I think it's a shiny Venomoth. Unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not seeing any references to that infamous band episode of the Pokemon anime where the Warden was shooting at Ash and company, but I guess that's for the best. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's kind of 
Fuchsia City. That's pretty much, those are all the routes that we've explored thus far. I'm going to just do, I'm going to explore just a little bit of some of the routes we haven't been to yet. I won't kind of like dawdle too much on them. It seems like they're in the middle of a wedding over here. They have their hands on a, a Volcarona for whatever reason. It seems like they're all, or, or is it a Volcarona? It looks kind of weird. Maybe it's based off of its like, uh, like party sprite. Uh, yeah, lots of lots of Pokemon hanging out in the water over here. Uh, apparently, uh oh, Clefairy is doing something it shouldn't be doing. It's a very naughty Clefairy. Kind of like the way that they reinterpreted this route. It's kind of just like a, I don't, I don't know if like suburbs is uh, the right way to kind of represent it, but it really feels like an extension of what was going on in Fuchsia City, so that's nice. Uh, and here, the pixel art here is getting a little bit more gra uh, granular, um, or less granular, I should say. Hmm. Lots, lots of uh, wind turbines, as we can see. Uh, and of course, here we have uh, the infamous uh, Pokemon route where seemingly uh, whoever <laughs> was responsible for designing it pretty much went out to lunch because they decided to just fill it with all sorts of real annoying mazes. Uh, see, there are two old men here playing chess, like in that old uh, Pixar short. Fun fact, the guy that directed uh, that uh, old man uh, chess Pixar short, he was the same director that was doing the original version of Ratatouille, and something happened where his version of Ratatouille just wasn't coming together. And so Brad Bird basically kind of took over the project from him. I feel bad for him because, I mean, he, he could have had his big first big break at Pixar with an incredible movie, but it just didn't really happen. And yeah, oh, look at that. We have some like pretty deep uh, underwater ish parts, probably inspired by uh, some of the kind of deeper parts in the Pokemon Ruby Sapphire Emerald games. And from here, we, we kind of have a, a continuation of the boardwalk that leads back to where we were previously. Uh, while we're here, I guess we might as well go and explore Saffron City a little bit. Uh, actually, I don't think we did not explore this route uh, west of uh, this city over here. Not, not really a whole lot to kind of speak of over here. I mean, it's not like it's a super remarkable route anyways. But here we go. Saffron City. Now, this is more... This is, I mean, kind of what we saw earlier on with Celadon City. But here it makes a little bit more sense. This is a really hustling and bustling and popping off city. Uh, I'm curious to see how, they, how they're going to represent uh sabrina in this city i can see over here as you can see she appears uh, on this nice little billboard with the words vs maybe she's battling someone oh dear oh dear there's something very cursed uh, above the sabrina billboard that i just noticed that i am not i'm very unhappy that i just saw but alas it's in the game uh interesting so we have I'm guessing that this is the fighting gym. No, this is the fighting gym. And this right over here is Sabrina's psychic gym. That makes way more sense. It seems like Sabrina has like quite a lot of fans, which is pretty neat. Uh, yeah, wow. The, the level of detail here is great. Oh, look at this. You have uh, Giovanni getting away in his helicopter after defeating Red or maybe being defeated by Red. That's neat. I don't even remember that from the games or anime. Maybe it was in... It's possible that it was in that uh, Pokemon, uh, like, red and blue inspired, like, anime series that we got a little while back. I don't remember what it was called. Uh, it was really good, though. Yeah, n no complaints here. I'm just looking through to see if there are any more interesting details that I can come across. Hmm... All right, well, with that out of the way, we might as well go and explore the kind of sea routes a little bit. So yeah, we have not yet really explored the kind of beach south of Fuchsia City, really. Uh, as you can see, we have a bunch of nice little people hanging out 
being real cool, really just having fun in the sun. Oh, we have a, a sunglasses uh, wearing squirtle hanging out at the beach. That's pretty cool. Um, what else? Um, yeah, not really a whole lot to say here. Oh, wow. Look at this. Look at this. Look at how frosty, frosty, frosty uh these seafoam islands are they really look like especially frosty over here compared to how they're like usually represented uh in the pokemon games uh, again i've not played let's go pikachu or let's go eevee it would be interesting to see how they kind of compare there to the way they're they were represented in fire red or leaf green uh no hmm i'm not i was kind of expecting that we would see some sort of reference to, to missing no somewhere around here, but I'm not seeing anything missing no related. I'm sure that there's probably a missing no related uh, reference somewhere in this entire map, but I'm not seeing anything in the place where you would be most likely to encounter him. I really love the kind of use of color here uh, for Cinnabar Island. It's very much just like blue and red, but it's two really kind of beautiful desaturated hues of blue and red. So beautiful. And I love how you do have this one little, I'm assuming like greenhouse over here that's just like bursting in color amidst the very desaturated island that it's a part of. So that's kind of cool. Um, and yeah, pretty neat, pretty neat. Let's go ahead and let's... Oh, I, I should not forget. We have some water to cover just a little bit south of Pallet Town. All right, and we're back at Pallet Town. Let's go ahead and let's check out the uh, Elite Four. So obviously we have um, a lot of ground to cover over here uh, north of the gates to the Elite Four. Lots of trainers just duking it out because you know that there are so many trainers that want to be number one um hmm yeah lots lot, lots of details going on here it's a little bit hard to keep your eyes focused on what's going on oh look at that shiny lickitung that's cool uh Okay, okay. You you can't really represent Victory Road uh, super well uh, on this route because it's entirely, you know, inside of a cave. So they, I guess they kind of shoved as many Victory Road details into the route leading up to it. And it seems like it, it seems like at this point things kind of get thinned out a lot more. Yeah, things are at this point it's largely largely just pokemon as you can see over here we have a why not and a wobbuffet two dunsparces just hanging out uh we have um mega gyarados which is i want to say like technically like the only prior to the introduction of the alolan forms of uh radita and radicate uh kind of the only dark type pokemon from gen one of re really that existed period uh, I guess the reason why we have so many, uh, like, Johto Pokemon represented around here, as you can see, we can have uh, Feraligator, uh, what's his name, Tyranitar, Meganium, is because, of course, the, the kind of uh, uh, Elite Four building that we have over here, you know, serves as the Elite Four building for both Kanto and Johto. Uh, and as you can see, we have a big climactic showdown underway between red and blue you know ash and gary whatever you want to call them and yeah that looks like that's about it oh one final little surprise we have a shiny not to all right cool wow that was this was a real delight i'm just looking carefully to see if i missed 
any parts of it. We kind of got them all, much like the series slogan. Definitely go check this out. If you go to uh, retroredrawn.com, R-E-T-R-O-R-E-D-R-A-W-N.com, uh, you can check this out for yourself in all its glory. That was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, but with that out of the way, it is time, high time, for us to get on with tonight's Pokemon challenge. Uh, let's go ahead and let's close up our Pretzel Rocks music. Sorry, as much as I enjoy it, it's better that we hear the dulcet tones of the Pokemon game we're about to play instead. And uh, let's go ahead and let's switch over to our game view. Uh, and I'm just going to close uh, my view of the map on my end. Whew. Uh oh, I think I loaded the wrong game. Uh, so, so to give a little bit of context, I've been working on some uh, graphics uh, for my streams that are going to be implemented in some future updates. Uh, some of those graphics come from Pokemon Emerald. And so uh, I think I might have accidentally loaded up Pokemon Emerald and forgot to uh, load up something else instead. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's switch into my main cam so I can fix this issue. Uh, hold on. I'm going to fix this real quick. There we go. There we go. The moment I, I saw myself standing in front of the Pokemon Center, I was like, wait a minute, that's weird. Didn't I last save standing in front of Koga after beating him? And here we go. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, over the course of the boss battle that we just had, uh, Parmesan uh, courageously took his life, uh, which means that he's no longer in rotation, but I'm not really that upset because it's not like he was that amazing of a team player to begin with. We largely just had him on the team so that he could, you know, add a little bit of flavor for the team, resist, uh, attacks from our opponents if needed. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch the category back over to Fire Red and Leaf Green. Uh, let's go ahead and let's get ourselves to a Pokemon Center uh, real quick because Blastoise is still very poisoned. <sighs> we need, uh, this is uh, one of those uh, points in our Pokemon runs where I feel like we just need to get ourselves some new Pokemon to help make up for the losses that we've had. So we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to do exactly that. Uh, I'm going to uh, deposit Parmesan the Zubat into our RIP box. And with that out of the way, uh, I'm going to heal up... Pokemon we currently have on our team, and we are going to go off in search of some new Pokemon on some of the routes uh, just adjacent to Fuchsia City. It's interesting because we actually have a not impossible chance of getting a Ditto uh, on the route that is uh, just east of Fuchsia City, and it's going to be... I don't know if I necessarily want a Ditto on my team, but it would be interesting to have one because that, again, Ditto is one of those Pokemon that I'm typically not, like, <laughs> chomping at the bit to use in like in my average Pokemon run, but maybe maybe it'll come in useful this time. Oh. Oh dear. Uh nope. I have only caught 26 kinds. There's no way I'm gonna get to 50. I'm sorry, my man. I'm sorry. Alright, here we go. This is I wanna say this is one of two different areas of the game, because we can also get Ditto at the Pokemon um what is it? The the Pokemon Mansion as well. Also, I'm gonna just I'm gonna put Blueberry at the back of the party for now because he's definitely a little bit too over leveled compared to where the rest of my team is at. Uh, I really did not need another Weeping Bell. If I gotta be honest with you guys, I will still go ahead and capture this dude because you know better to have him uh, at my disposal than not. But man, I've had such 
bad luck at capturing Pokemon that I already have registered in my Pokedex, you know, hanging around in my box. All right, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to actually go south of uh, Celadon City. Fuck. I could try confusing him. Maybe that will make things easier for myself. I'm going to go south of Fuchsia City, and I'm going to see if I can get someone in the water over there. I, even if it's just, like, a tentacle, like, that's a pretty... Uh, the problem is, is that, like... Tentacle, it's a Pokemon that shares a lot of weaknesses with some of the other Pokemon in my party. He has, uh, he's a poison type Pokemon, uh, which means that he is uh, just as weak to psychic type moves as Honda and uh, Victory Bell are, but oh well. Uh, I'm going to call this guy Pickle, because I did not like encountering him. Actually, I'm going to call him Pickles. Because I really did not like encountering him. You know, I, I... I know that I've hummed and hawed over having... Uh, not wanting to use uh, Spearow in my party, but I feel like the more that I reflect on the matter, the more that I, you know, weigh my options, the more I feel like it, it would be unbecoming of me to not at least, at the very least, um, give him another shot. He, he's not going to replace Dodrio, but, you know. Okay, so this is, Tendori is the one that we raised up earlier. We actually, we actually have a few options to do, deal with now. We have these two guys, and we also have Oolong. Let's see here. Now, these two guys are at level 20. This guy's at level 25, which I definitely appreciate because it will bring him a little bit more quickly to parity with where the rest of my team is currently at. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> Serious nature. Uh, naughty nature. Bold nature. Okay. Hmm. Uh... I forget what Pokemon Naughty Nature. What does this boost again? I want to say that it it boosts uh, attack, but I don't remember what it lowers. So I'm just gonna check that out real super duper quick because I don't want to shoot myself in the foot. Uh, let's see here. Naughty increased attack and decreased special defense. I think I get the sense that this Firo is probably the one that I'm going to want on my party. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert him in there. I also, I have not forgotten about the fact that we do have Fudge Sickle, the Magikarp, which if we're struggling to get more quality Pokemon on our team later on, we can always add him in. The problem is, is that at this point in the game, like, it's just, it, it would be much more convenient at this point if we had the experience share to kind of raise this guy up. Without the experience share, it's just not that great of a time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of Burrito. He, he keeps crawling his way back into my team every now and then because there's just some moment or instance where we really kind of need his prowess, but yeah, I don't think we need it right now. Okay. Uh, I suspect I'll probably end up switching out to Victory Bell. Uh, but we'll see. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna do a Nightshade, and I'm just gonna see how this does. Maybe it'll do okay. Hmm. That's actually gonna do... Oh, wow, that did no damage at all. I thought, like, you know, Haunter... It might be poison type himself, but he has very low defenses. Maybe he might get a little bit hurt by that, but wow. Z uh, Tentacle just has really bad attack.
Oh, here we go. Shelter. Shelter has access to some pretty decent um, ice type moves, but I don't think it's going to be a huge problem. Uh oh. Well, here come the crits. Oh, only two times. Wow. I'm beginning to feel kind of bad that we're never going to be able to uh, evolve Hunter into a Gengar on this run because Hunter is really pulling his weight. I'm impressed. I, I kind of just brought him onto the team because it was cool to have a, a ghost at my disposal. But this guy's this guy's pulling his weight. <sighs> Man, the, the, the redrawn version of the map that we just explored a moment ago did such a better job of reimagining this route than the game uh, depicted it as. Like, this is such a, like, sad little beach with literally just two <laughs> trainers hanging out at it. Th that that map did such a better job of representing the majesty, majesty of the hypothetical beach south of Fuchsia City. Man, Goldeen is really not having a good day. Here we go. This is actually... This might be the first Pokemon that actually makes us sweat a little bit because it is a water-type Pokemon that actually really places a strong emphasis on water type moves, but we might, I think we might be able to KO it before it causes us any grief. Uh, maybe not. Oh, wait a minute. Shadow Punch can actually hit uh, without needing to worry about uh, accuracy, so we should be okay. There we go. Uh, you know what? I'm a little bit concerned that Staryu might actually cause us some trouble, so I'm going to actually swap into Tortellini for this one. Ooh, I just realized something. We can potentially get Staryu in Pokemon Leaf Green. I'm pretty certain it's like one of the Pokemon uh, exclusive oh, whoops, uh, to this version of the game. Let me just look up real quick where we can get Staryu, because... I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to do so if it is possible for us to very easily miss capturing it. Let's see here. Okay, yeah, so I was correct. You can indeed uh, get good old Staryu in the game. Hmm, interesting, interesting. So. You can get it in Pallet Town, I'm assuming it, via fishing. Uh, you can get it in Vermilion City, Cinnabar Island, One Island, Five Island, and Icefall Cave. By the way, I've not talked about the, the Sevi Islands yet. What I've decided on is I'm just going to do... I'm going to do the couple of islands that you need to complete um, right after Cinnabar Gym, uh, just because I feel like... We could definitely use a little bit of the experience that you uh, get from exploring them before we take on the 8th gym. I'm not going to do like the rest of the Civi Islands and the whole subplot that happens in them past the Elite Four. Once we beat the Elite Four, that'll be that for the run. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So, Gen 3. Wow, there's a lot of... Um, there are a lot of Pokemon that you can get by fishing around here. You can get Krabby. I didn't even think about Krabby. You can get, uh, indeed, Staryu. You can get Gyarados. So it seems like if we're fishing with a Super Rod, uh, we got ourselves a 1% chance at a Psyduck. A uh, 1% chance of a Slowpoke. Uh, a 40% chance of a Krabby. A 4% chance of a Kingler. 
a 40% chance of a Staryu and a 15% chance at a Gyarados. Now, there are a couple of Pokemon there that I wouldn't really want. I, I wouldn't particularly care for getting, like, another Gyarados, for example, but, like, that's a pretty... There are quite a few Pokemon there that I would not be upset about getting at all, to be totally honest with you. Uh, all right. Oh, lots of trainers over here. I, I was not anticipating this. One thing I could do is I could actually like just go ahead and immediately skeet over to the Seafoam Islands just so that I can capture whatever water ice type Pokemon is residing in that cave waiting for me to be captured. And then I'll like just immediately fly back over to Fuchsia City and we'll con continue our kind of training from there. Man, I feel bad for this guy. Also, I will, I will say I appreciate them um, reusing Seeking Sprite uh, as it appeared in the Ruby Sapphire Emerald games. As I, I quite liked that, that sprite from back in those games. Fucking shit. I was trying to actually praise the game for once. I was actually telling it why it's a good-ass time, but uh, I guess it had other plans. All right, let's go ahead and let's spin the wheel. One... Two and three. Switch it up. Uh, we've not landed on this particular prize wheel spot in a while. Uh, this means uh, that we are actually going to need to uh, switch up the Pokemon at the front of our party three times in a row. Uh, who do we want to start with? You know what? I'm feeling a little bit ballsy. I'm feeling a little bit gutsy. Let's swap into Marshmallow. If Seeking uses another normal type move, we should be able to body it. Oh, well, I mean, it, it wasn't um, exactly the normal type move I was anticipating, but we're A-OK. -okay. Uh, next up, on the off chance that Seeking follows up with a water type move, we should be safe if we switch into Cookie next. Or if it, you know, uses supersonic, that's okay as well. Thankfully, we had a really dumb AI to take on this time around. And finally, I will close things out by switching into Blueberry, who will most certainly just finish this off in dramatic fashion. We've not actually used uh, Strength yet, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use that. And there we go. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, I'm actually wondering. I'm like half tempted. Maybe I could have used. Well, too late for that. And there it is. It's Tentacool. It's not not exactly a Pokemon that I was like, you know, super. Uh, what's the word? Like chomping at the bit to catch. But nevertheless, we're catching him. Uh, well, we don't have a lot of Pokeballs left. We'll have to be careful when we get to the Seafoam Islands, actually. And there we go. Uh, it drifts in shallow seas. Uh, anglers who hook them by accident are often punished by their stingers. Oh, dear. Uh, I know that Tentacle is not a octopus, but I nevertheless... I'm going to call this dude uh, Taco Yaki. Uh, whoops. There we go. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to schlep on over to the Seafoam Islands to see who I can get there. 
Also, uh, <laughs> we're in a new route, and I didn't even really anticipate that. I probably should have fished here, to be honest, see if I could get someone new. Oh, well. Next time we come to a new sea route, we will fish a little bit, see what we can get. Let's, uh, I think we can do it with a Pokeball. I think we can do it. Maybe one of the, like, maybe we'll get really lucky and get, like, a modest-natured uh, tentacle. I'm gonna call this guy Sashimi. Maybe we'll get, like, a really powerful, great IV, uh, modest-natured modest tentacle out of one of the two tentacles we just caught. And he'll make for a, a great new addition to the team. Uh, almost there. Give it, just give it a second. There was a very brief period of time during my Emerald Cross run where I was almost uh, about to... Uh, what was I going to say? Where I was almost about to use uh, a tentacle uh, in my run after the Tate and Lisa battle went awry, but... It never really came together, I would say. I, I still kept him on my team, but I didn't really use him that much. Okay, well, I guess... You know, I guess I'll keep Tortellini to the front until I capture whoever I need to capture. Also, this, this interior is way more glacial than I remember it being. Oh, shit! I had completely forgotten that Slowpoke hangs around here. Um... Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, the good news is, I'm actually very happy that we encountered Slowpoke, because uh, Slowpoke and Slowbro are, like, pretty powerful Pokémon. Uh, their Psychic typing is especially coveted. One problem is, is however, being Psychic typing, uh, they actually can inflict some serious damage on some of the members of our team if we're not careful. Uh-oh. Well, he is a Disable, so I guess that's not the worst thing in the world. I'm actually gonna... Hmm. I'm trying to think who... I, I want to make sure I can play this correctly. Cookie, does this guy... Does this guy still have... Yep, he still has Yawn. So you know what? I'm actually gonna... I'm gonna swap into Cookie. I'm gonna use Yawn. Uh, I'm glad that I swapped into him. And then I think... I think I'm pretty safe if I use... Brick Break. If I use if I use Body Slam, I would just obliterate Slowpoke. But I think that with Brick Break, I can probably chip down his HP in a, a reasonable manner without needing to worry about accidentally, you know, bot bodying him by accident. If anything, this might actually be a little bit. I'm, I'm almost wondering if that's maybe. No, nah, th that'll probably be fine. Oh shit. Oh, shits and giggles, we have ourselves another crit. Well, let's see what the prize wheel has in store for us tonight. One, two, and three. No center, that means uh, that until uh, somebody scores their next critical hit, uh, we cannot heal at a Pokemon Center. Who knows, maybe we'll score another critical hit while we're weakening up Snorlax a little bit. Uh, sorry, Slowpoke, I mean. I think two more Brick Breaks, and we should be okay. I don't think we're going to be... I don't think we'll, we'll thread against the Danger Zone too bad, even with the damage range. This will be the last one, and then we'll be... We, we should be okay. All right. I think we got this in the bag, but cross our fingers that this happens. I I gotta say, like, I, I was not really looking forward to the fact that we were probably gonna get yet another um, water type Pokemon within the Seafoam Islands, but Slowpoke. That right there is a, a secondary water type Pokemon that I can definitely get my mind behind. Now, I will say, like, 
I definitely was taken off guard because Slowpoke, a Pokemon that you can't really get easily within Pokemon Fire Red. This is my first time playing Pokemon Leaf Green. I had forgotten he's a pretty common Pokemon in this game. Incredibly slow and dopey. It takes five seconds for it to feel pain when under attack. Uh, you know what? Let's call this guy, or rather this gal, uh, Mochi. There we go. And you know, Mochi might not necessarily be the most ideal Pokemon to take on Sabrina with, but being a psychic type Pokemon itself, <laughs> it'll at the very least be able to resist the psychic type moves that she will perform on us, so we should be okay. Uh, hello to Adam Gumby, slow and dopey. Uh, I know how that is. Zoom. I, I'm not really certain how it is that your uh, Zoom part is meant to be read, but thank you for tuning into the stream. Uh, let's go ahead and let's... Oh, I just forgot. I just forgot. We actually cannot use a Pokemon Center until we get our next critical hit uh, per uh, where we previously landed on the prize wheel of criticality. So we will actually have to take the next little bit without being able to uh, heal up at the Pokemon Center or even get um, uh, our beloved new little Slowpoke out of the Pokemon box. So I guess all we can do right now is just train up a little bit. Hope that you're having a good evening, Adam. Um... Let's see here. We have not... Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, I, I hate it. I just want to say right here, right now, I hate it. hate it when them Pokemon games try and fake you out with regards to w whether you're about to battle a trainer or not. But that trainer that we just... That we're in the middle of ba a battle with right now, she was, like, just sort of, like, idly moving back and forth, and it's like, oh, that's not a trainer. Nope, it is a trainer. Uh, Adam says, not bad, just finished RAF, which is, of course, Respawning Fire, the podcast that I appear uh, bi-weekly on, uh, alongside Adam and Chad, uh, and wanted to pop by since I'm on the PC. Uh, and yes, as Adam just said, she duped you. She duped me real good, and I'm really not happy with it. Uh, we might be 10 levels uh, underneath this Bellsprout, but I think we can actually take him on. I think we'll be okay. This is a lot like the, the grass-type gym, where we were just... It was just a genuine buffet of grass-type Pokémon that we were battling, and that allowed us to get very far in it with just a very low-level Daduo. Oh, shit! Critical hit! Well, that means that the curse of us not being able to heal at the Pokémon Center is now lifted, but... We're going to need to spin the prize wheel yet again to see what punishment we're going to have to endure right now. Let's see. <laughs> Five push-ups. Now, uh, if you've tuned into some of my prior streams, you'll know that my right arm has been... Uh, a little bit on the fritz as of recently. I'm going to do five push-ups right here and right now, but uh, I'm just going to say for the record that if it lands on five push-ups or ten push-ups over the course of uh, the rest of the stream, uh, I'm going to do more yoga moves instead of push-ups. I need to make sure, because I'm pretty certain that the one time I went and did a bunch of push-ups on that one stream, it actually made the... Uh, Pano's feeling in my right shoulder a little bit worse, so we're just gonna do five, and then we will switch to something else uh, next time this happens. Alright. So you can see the, the basement floor is a lot more cleaned up compared to how it looked previously. Alright. One, two, three, four, and five. I know that was a little bit, a little bit of a weak sauce uh, set of push-ups, but my my right arm's still feeling a little bit iffy, so you'll have to forgive me for that. All right.
Ooh, yeah, my yeah, that that was not a not a good thing to do for my right. Not a good thing to do for my right shoulder. I'm not gonna push it any more than that. And here we have Tangela, the one pure grass type Pokemon from Generation 1 that was not a grass poison type. Mm. And one more fly, and we should be able to take it out without any problem. I don't really understand, like, clearly we're flying up high into the air, and yet... Uh, the, the bind that Tangela is inflicting on Tenduri still hurts it? I don't really get that. Don't really get that. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate that. I, I will definitely try not to overextend its muscles any further. Also, speaking of um, more Pokemon that we'll be able to add to our team, uh, if we actually go further along that route over there, we should eventually be able to get to that one other route that we haven't been to just yet and capture some new Pokemon there. It's like the route just like it, it's a route with all the mazes. That's south of where Snorlax resides. All right, let's just check out this. Uh, oh, look at that quiet nature. That's actually the perfect nature that you would want a Slowpoke to be, because Quiet Nature uh, means you have increased special attack and decreased speed. You want uh, Slowpoke's uh, special attack to be increased because it already has exceptional special attack to begin with. Uh, you don't mind its speed being decreased because its speed is already so slow to begin with. And unlike Modest Nature, which lowers um, its attack, um, you actually want its attack to be usable because uh, Slowpoke and Slowbro actually learn quite a few uh, physically based moves. So yeah, Water Gun Confusion, uh, Disable, and Headbutt. Yeah, n n not exactly the, the greatest set of starting moves, but we can work with it. We also can uh, immediately teach it Surf if we need to, so. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna remove Takoyaki from the party. Uh, if I just compare these two guys, Let's see here. This guy has Liquid Ooze. Both have Liquid Ooze. Uh, this guy's Hardy Nature, and that's Quirky. Wow, T two natures that don't actually result in any change in their stats. So that's a little, a little bit of bad luck over there. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's teach some technical machines. Unfortunately, we don't have any other, like, real Psychic-type moves of note just yet, but when we do, when we, when we get to um, Saffron City, we will be able to gain access to uh, Psychic while we're there, which we will definitely, definitely teach to uh, Slowpoke. Also, uh, seeing as how I was just uh, going through my... TM case and saw it. We might as well teach Tenduri how to use Seal Wing. It's unlikely that we're gonna like ever deliberately force it to fight a like rock type Pokemon or a uh, I, I guess an ice type Pokemon as well because those two Pokemon types are weak towards Steel moves. But if ever we do, it probably would not hurt to give him this just so that he can counter them. Okay, uh, also I need to, at some point I'm going to need to teach Firo a better normal type move than what he currently has on hand because I, I don't think that I, 
I don't think that I, Fury Attack is very usable in the long term, if I gotta be honest. Alright. Well, here we go. I don't think this guy... This guy has bird Pokemon, but... Uh, I don't feel like we should battle Firo with him. I think that we'll want to swap him out. Uh, who do we want to swap him out to? Let's swap out to Cookie. Um, I was not really hoping that that would happen. I'm going to swap into Blueberry next. Let's just go through the entire party. Come on now. And goodbye, Pidgeotto. Wow, no level ups. Oh, look at that. Farfetched. Uh, hmm. Well, let's go to back to Cookie. Let's do it. Uh oh. The good news is that. Thankfully, we'll still be able to retrieve our Quick Claw after battle. It'd be really bad if that, like, permanently knocked it off. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's give Machi. Let's give uh, Mo... You know, I, I need to be very clear and specific here. The pronunciation is Mochi. It's Mochi, but I always pronounce it Machi because that's just how I was so used to pronouncing it for such a long period of time. Ah, mm. uh, god damn it. Well, at least we got the one hit KO. Uh, let's go ahead before we forget to do so and let's spin that wheel. One, two, and three. Go broke. Uh, that means uh, that after this battle concludes, we're going to have to run back to a Pokemon Center and uh, go completely broke. Uh, waste all of our money on items and then immediately sell those items uh, so that we have no real money of worth left in our piggy bank. Uh, the good news is we have been doing a pretty good job as of recent of buying up items whenever we get the funds to do so. The one thing, though, is that we're a little bit lacking on Pokeballs, which is not the biggest deal in the world because this is a Nuzlocke run, and we're not meant to have, like, you know, all the Pokeballs in the world, but... I just, um... I hope that after this we don't have another critical hit in the next battle that forces us to go back to Fuchsia City, because, yeah, this is getting a little bit much. Uh, let's see, four minutes I'll do tonight's Snacks and Colacion segment. I have something pretty sweet, pretty, pretty sweet and tasty, actually, in store for tonight's uh, stream, so you should look forward to that. Uh, Pokemon Center time. Where is it? Here we go. Why why do they have to put it so, like, out in the sticks like that? All right. Uh, we actually, I mean, 28,000 Poké Dollars. That's actually, like, not a a bad amount of... That's actually, like, quite a bit of money. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to think, what can I spend it all on so I'll use up all my money? I guess I can spend... I'll spend it on 23 Ultra Balls. And then I'll buy one Super Potion. And now I will go ahead and I will drop 23 Ultra Balls and one Super Potion. It will be a gift for whoever finds them on the floor of the Pokemart.
All right. <sighs> okay, third Pokemon trainer, don't fail me now. You cannot, absolutely cannot crit on me in this upcoming battle that we're about to have. We just want to have a fine, clean little battle, no crits to go around whatsoever. Yeah. He, he has, I can already tell though that things are not going to go according to plan because he has Pokemon. All these bird trainers have Pokemon that like are known for using moves like Fury Attack, which have a very high chance of scoring a critical hit. So this is going to be, this is going to be difficult. Uh, but maybe I can, maybe I can finish this off real quick. Goodbye. Uh, Mochi will take care of this one. <laughs> Goodbye. Unfortunately, the sad thing about <laughs> Mochi is that we're going to have to wait all the way until level 37 before we'll actually be able to fuck. Yeah, all the way till level 37 before we can fuck. Uh, all the way until level 37 before we can evolve him. So we still got some training to do. One, two, and three. Ten push-ups. I am not doing another ten push-ups because uh, my arm is still feeling pretty swollen. Uh, you know what? Let's do. Let's go ahead. Let's finish up this battle. Let Birdkeeper Chester say his final thoughts. Let, we'll do our snacks and cold acidal segment, and then we'll do a little bit of yoga. Whew. Remember, as always, you can catch the stream you're currently watching live on twitch.tv slash live every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. EST. Uh, I appreciate however it is that you choose to support the show, be it by following, subscribing, or even an honest-to-goodness tip. Uh, but even if you don't have any loonies or toonies to toss my way, it's no big deal. I will still be here no matter what. Uh, with that out of the way... Let's get into tonight's segment of snacks in Colation. So, here's the thing. Last time around, we really just had a doozy of a disappointment. Not a terrible snack, but those tomato balls from France really just did not do it chief they just were not doing it chief uh despite having a very very nice sort of peanutty aromatic scent to them and so i figured you know what this time around let's go for something that we know is gonna be thoroughly entertaining and delicious from beginning to end from a trusted brand known for its uh, delicious candy the world over uh, of course, I am talking uh, about Haribo. Uh, and what I have with me today right here uh, is Haribo Bizer Ayer. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I think that the Ayer part means eggs, but I don't really know what the Bizer part is. As you can see, they are kind of multicolored, like egg-ish shaped things. Uh, of course, uh, all of the... Um, uh, descriptions on this bag are entirely in German, so I don't know what the hell it's saying here. Uh, Haribo macht uh, Kinderfroh uh, und uh, Erwaschen Ebenso. I think this is... I, I'm pretty certain that I know that part. I'm pretty certain that's the part that means, like, kids love it so. Uh, but yeah, I don't... I can't make heads or tails of... Um, what it says on the back. Oh, wait, hold on a second. So there's no English instructions on the back, but there is a, like a little bit of French over here. 
Um, let's see here. Uh, ingredient. Sucre. Uh, sugar. The first ingredient in this is sugar, of course. Uh, Cyril de glucose. Uh, glucose syrup. Uh, gelatine. Gelatin. Uh, Adifiant. Uh, acit uh, citric. Uh, so citric acid. Uh, concentré de fruits et de plants. So some fruit and plant concentrates. Uh, let's see here. Carthan. Uh, carotte. Uh, spiruline, uh, citron, pomme, hibiscus, uh, arôme, uh, agent dans l'aubage, etc, etc. So we got a little bit of apple, a little bit of carrot, and some spirulina in these bad boys. I mean, I wasn't really anticipating anything more elaborate than that. Let's go ahead and let's jump right into this bad boy. Uh, first things first, I mean, I really love the feel of these dudes. They're like nice little cool little kind of rocky things. Very tough though. I'm trying to, I'm squeezing one of them right here to see if I can feel the kind of gummy hiding within it. And I'm not really getting through to it. It's actually kind of impressive. Uh, but man, a surprisingly good scent. You would think uh, when dealing with a, a candy that is as hard as a rock that you wouldn't be able to get a really good scent out of him, but it is delightfully sweet. This is like being inside of one of those candy shops that like intentionally pump sweetness into the air to get you into a more of a spending kind of frame of mind. Ooh, this is good. All right, well, without further ado, we have a few different colors uh, to taste here. We have red, we have pink, we have yellow, we have green, uh, we have blue. Oh, and we have a couple of whites at the bottom and we have orange. We have a lot of colors to taste. Let's throw it ahead because this is the color that I associate most uh, with this bag in front of us. And let's try ourselves a red. Oh, huh. oh, huh. OK, uh, let me let me show you a cross section of this. As you can see, it's white and I'm not really certain. It's almost like a nougat. Oh, huh, interesting. But it's like way easier to kind of like bite into and chew than like a nougat. It's like a like a, I, I, I'm trying I'm struggling for like the comparison that I out to best make in this scenario. But like it's really it's easy to ply through, which is good. OK, let me try. I'm going to try the, the pink and the orange next. See how these two fare together. Again, I'm going to do a couple of cross sections just to make sure that we're not biting into something that we don't know the center of. Yep, it's all white. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. It's, um, you know, I wasn't necessarily expecting anything particularly you know, elaborate or avant-garde out of these egg thingies. But I was actually, I was kind of looking forward to being able to bite into something that had a very gummy center, as is typical of a lot of these Haribo candies. And this isn't really scratching that itch, but it's still tasty. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab a green and a blue and see if these can turn around my thoughts on them a little bit. Hmm. Hmm. Here's the thing. These candies are the best snacks that we've had thus far on this channel since the return of Snacks and Colacion, but they're still not that great. I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm going to have to give these a 6 out of 10. Now, here's the thing. I honestly consider a 6 out of 10 on this channel to be a perfectly fine and acceptable score for this segment. I think that once you get into the fives, you're getting into pretty disappointing territory. I'm still disappointed in this, but I still think it is very, it is a very functional and edible snack in the way that I feel like many of the other snacks that we previously tested uh, during our Leaf Green Nuzlocke run were not. So it's not that bad. If you see it, sitting on a store shelf i mean maybe consider getting it if you if you're in like a hostage situation and this is all you can eat it's fine but there, there are just there are better haribo candies out there all right 
with that out of the way, I'm just going to have a quick little bit of water to help uh, clear up my throat. That's the other thing, too, is that the, the candy is kind of like sticking to your molars a little bit. It doesn't make very great. Not like aftertaste, but I guess after chew. Um... Like uh, I said, I promised that I would do a little bit of top-down yoga, so let's go ahead and let's do that. Um, give me a quick little second. This time, I, I think it would make more sense if I would just push the chair in like this, because I think this will clear up the most space for us to do our thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on my hands and knees like this. I'm going to extend an alternate arm and an alternate leg up, and I'm going to do... Five reps like this for 10 seconds. So we're at like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, and while I'm doing this, uh, I've talked about this in prior streams where I've done this, I'm uh, clenching my abdominal muscles so as to give my core a little bit of a workout. It's not the most uh, intensive kind of core exercise that you can possibly do. It's pretty basic, pretty simple, good for little bits of, you know, rehabilitation here and there, but that's sort of what's going on. We're going to go into our third rep. One. Uh, oh, wait. Well, now we're at, like, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, we're going to go ahead into our fourth one. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and our fifth one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And there we go. I think that going forward, I should probably just consider. Uh, changing those spots on the prize wheel to just be uh, do yoga because my arm has been feeling pretty sore for like the past little while. I really don't know what kind of instigated it, what caused it to become a kind of overextended like such. Um, but maybe I should just make it so that it's permanently yoga going forward. All right. Uh, let's return to our adventures. Okay, so this girl's gonna have some trade Pokemon, which is interesting. What is she gonna have? Gloom. Oh, I get it, because typically it's actually kind of tough to get Gloom in Pokemon Leaf Green, so I suspect she'll probably have Weeping Bell as well. Ooh, poor form. Poor form, Gloom. Uh, maybe she won't... Maybe she'll just have Oddish, actually. Maybe she won't have any Weeping Bells. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh, we're okay. We're okay. Ah, come on. I was just trying to freaking <laughs> top down the last little bit of his hit points. All right. Let's go ahead and let's spin that prize wheel. One, two, and three. Drop five. That means that once we exit this battle, uh, we are going to have to drop five random items that are currently nestled in our bag. I, I guess I guess our goal for tonight's stream at this point is to try and see if we can get through this entire route without having a single critical hit while battling any one of these trainers. I don't know if it's possible, but we'll see. Uh, 
All right, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to toss myself a repel. I'm going to toss myself a full heal. So that's two. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to toss myself an awakening. So that's three. I'm going to toss myself a super repel. So that's four. And I'm going to toss myself a paralyzed heal. So that's five. Uh, while I'm here, though, I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to give a protein to Cookie because I feel like he would actually benefit from it. All right, here we go. Well, wow, so many grass type Pokemon on this route. Like I was I was really concerned that we weren't gonna get a lot of opportunities to level up Tanduri, but we've been in grass type heaven. Here we go, level twenty-four, here we come. Uh, come on. It, it's... <laughs> if I get another critical hit trying to knock him down with Pursuit, I'm going to be so pissed. Come on. Ah, it worked out. All right, here we go. We did it. We actually managed to get through one trainer on this route without... Uh, somebody scoring a critical hit during the battle. Uh, who do I want to swap out to? All right, Cookie, you're up. Uh, again, I feel like this literally happened like five battles ago. Here we go. W Wigglytuff, it's I don't feel like we've ever encountered Wigglytuff up until now. You know what? I am wondering, should I send out? Hmm. Could Marshmallow maybe take on Wigglytuff? I'm going to give it a shot. I think we have a chance. Thing about Wigglytuff is Wigglytuff has a lot of hit points, which means that we should be able to get a nice HP bonus out of this battle if everything goes according to plan. Ah, uh, I forgot. Okay, so that means I should... I can probably use Curse to take it down, but does... I'm kind of threading the needle here, because if Wigglytuff has a, a non-normal type attacking move, I could be screwed. Like, literally this turn, actually. So I'm going to have to be careful. Okay, uh... So Wigglytuff has a uh, defense curl. It has a sable. It means half of its moves are confirmed not able to do anything to us. Now, what about the other half? You'd have to imagine it at least has one normal tape attacking move, which means that we there's one more unknown in its kit that we don't know about. If it's suddenly... Oh, Sing. Okay. Okay. I mean, I can kind of live with this, actually. It's actually not that big of a deal, because if Wigglytuff, you know, is continuing to slowly die because of the curse, it's actually good if I'm kind of not wasting any power points. Uh, 
I, I kind of wish it had... If it had hurt itself in confusion, it would have immediately... Oh, I guess not. And there we go. Uh, only 676 XP. That's not... That was not really worth it. All right. I'm going to keep Tendori at the front of the party because although these guys have a lot of uh, poison type Pokemon, they do also have some fighting type Pokemon, so maybe we'll get lucky there. Or maybe not. Here we go. We can finally put psychic our psychic type to good use. Uh oh. Um. Alright, well, let's give it a shot. <sighs> Actually, I might... You know what? I think I might swap him out. Yeah, I'm gonna swap him out. I, uh... I wanted that to go better. I wanted to finally, like, be able to actually really use my psychic typing to full use, but I just didn't want to take any chances. Fa, Come on. Good news is that now that we have Fly at our disposal, we can just immediately go back to the Pokemon Center without needing to take a whole bunch of weird maneuvers to avoid our steps killing us when poisoned. Goodbye. And there we go, level 40. Uh, hmm. You know what? I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give Cookie a shot at this one. I've not really had a proper opportunity to really use Body Slam yet. This will be testing grounds for that. Ah, uh, come on. Ah. Uh. Right, just need to get one more good hit in and we're, we'll be okay. Come on. Yes! Here we go. And you know what? Because I don't want to immediately fly back to the Pokemon Center while we've made this much progress, I'm going to have Tortellini. And you know what? Actually, you know what? Do we have... How many how many potions do we have on hand? You know, we don't not we actually don't have a lot of potions. Okay, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Tortellini take out this last dude. Tortellini is part poison type, so it actually cannot be poisoned itself by any of the damage that they can throw our way. Also, it's been itching to level up to level 33. By the way, you, you might have uh, noticed it earlier when I was doing the Snacks and Colossal segment. I've been uh, doing my best to really kind of gussy up the um, shelving unit that I recently purchased uh, behind me. Uh, I went and transferred all the amiibos uh, that previously were sitting around in a closed cabin in my room and put them over there. Uh, and I am very, very, very pleased with the way that I managed to arrange them. I also put some of my Pokemon Mega Constructs and some of my Mario Legos there as well. I still have a lot of Mario Legos over on the desk uh, that is uh, to my left in front of me, uh, a little bit past the monitor I'm currently looking at. Um, eventually, I'll have to figure out where I'm going to put those, but for the time being, I'm very pleased with how I've managed to set up that shelving unit. Wow, this guy, how does this guy have so many Pokemon? I mean, I, I'm not complaining, really. I, I feel like Tortellini has really been kind of lagging behind the rest of my team in terms of leveling up a little bit. So it's good to finally, you know, have an opportunity to finally catch up a little bit, but... 
this guy, this is not the kind of trainer that you would want to battle unprepared. Well, I'm gonna, I'll end up, I'll have uh, ended up using return 10 times by the end of this battle. Or maybe nine, we'll see. Let's go ahead and let's fly back to Fuchsia. I'm gonna have another one of those egg things. At the end of the day, even though they're not the best, they are still sustenance. I'm a little bit hungry. I guess we can slot we can slot Tendori to the front of the party again. There we go. Ooh. We did not bring a Pokemon with us that knows how to use cut. Um hmm. uh, but we are Finally in a part of the game where we can actually catch a new Pokemon. Uh, let's... Hmm. I'm gonna... Yeah, I'll, I'll keep... Or you know what? Maybe... I'm gonna put uh, Marshmallow and Mochi at the front of the party. I think they'll be able to take them on. Oh, damn it. Here we go. Well, there are way more trainers in red and blue than I remember that have, um, like, s straight up just starter Pokemon. And it's not actually, that's actually not that bad of a move, but... Problem is, is that Charmander is just not very powerful at this stage. If he had evolved himself, that would have been a little bit more of a fair fight. And by the way, as you saw just a moment ago, this is one of our, our big um, points of failure in the Tate and Lisa battle, that we had forgotten that in Gen 3, Surf will only hit the two Pokemon that you're facing off against. It won't hit any of your allies. And that's something that we forgot for the Tate and Lisa boss battle, and it really cost us. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there's another bird... Tamer, who I'm assuming probably wants to fight us. Uh, it's another bird tamer. Lots of uh, lots of trainers over there that probably have psychic and uh, poison type Pokemon. Oh, here we go. We have gr th that's the patch of grass that we can potentially get a new Pokemon inside of. But uh, Route 13. Hold on a second. I just want to check real quick. So I want to make sure that I don't capture a Pokemon that I'm not allowed to capture. Um, right, so 15, that's where we caught the Weeping Bell from earlier. 14 is this little stretch over here. 13. Okay, so 12, we, we already have captured our Pokemon for Route 12, that Pokemon being 
our Snorlax. So, you know, we have two more opportunities to capture a new Pokemon here, 13 and 14. Uh, but we will need to come back with a Pokemon that knows uh, Cut, unfortunately. Uh, I, I think that guy over there might actually not be a trainer. Let's battle these guys first, though. Man, I, I, I gave them a 6 out of 10, and yet I can't stop eating them. Uh, here we go again. Come on. Ah. There we go. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to swap out to somebody else who I think will be able to do a better job against him. You know what? Tortellini. Let's have Tortellini do this. <sighs> you know what? Earlier I was mentioning about how uh, both, um, what are their names, Slowpoke and Slowbro, like, no, pretty exhaustive move pools. I'm actually going to look up what move Slowbro learns in Gen 3 right now, because I want to see, is there anything of real note, anything that's really unexpected that I can teach this dude that will give me a real big leg up in battle, because I want to, I want to see what I should be kind of keeping in mind going forward. Because eventually the the TMs that we will be able to acquire in this game are really going to begin to build up. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, worth pointing out, uh, Slowpoke and Slowbro eventually will learn Psychic by level up, like without us needing to teach it a TM. Uh, let's see here. Okay, interesting. So... Uh, these guys can learn Calm Mind, which is actually a very, very useful boosting move. Uh, they can learn Focus Punch. Uh, not uh, very, very situationally useful, but, you know, it's an option. Uh, they can learn uh, Ice Beam and Blizzard, uh, which, I mean, it's not super surprising because I feel like a lot of a lot of Water-type Pokemon know how to use Ice-type moves. Um, Iron Tail uh, and Earthquake. Uh, some more physical moves. Uh, dig as well, we, which we still have uh, the TM for Dig at our disposal if we need to. Um, brick Break, which is actually not bad at all. Although I don't know that we need to have another Brick Break user on our team. Um, Alright, here we go. This is where things get really interesting. So both Slowpoke and Slowbro can learn Flamethrower and Fire Blast. I don't remember where you get the TM for either of those two moves, but I mean, their usefulness uh, cannot be denied. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Ladies and gentlemen, we just had a crit performed on us, which means that it is time for us to spin the Wheel of Criticality. Excuse the water bottle being in front of it. One, two, and three. Get bench. That means that after this battle, we are going to have to bench Mochi for the next 30 minutes, or at this point, basically, until the end of the stream. That is unfortunate. We were just kind of on a roll, but oh well. All right. I'm going to swap in Cookie, and he will take care of the rest of the Grimer. Uh, come on. Uh, you've got to be kidding me. What am I supposed to attack you with now? All right, I'm going to swap into Blueberry. We're going to use him to finish him off. Uh, some other notable moves that Slowpoke and Slowbro learn include Shadow Ball, a not bad physically oriented move in this gen. 
Uh, rock smash, surf, dive, rest. Uh, facade, secret powder, secret power. Uh, hyper beam and of course uh, return in frustration. Uh, they also learned belly drum as a uh, egg move. Uh, we just got another crit, which means we're gonna need to spin that wheel again. One, two, and three. Switch it up. Uh, that means that uh, whatever battle that we're gonna head into next, we're gonna have to switch the Pokemon at the front of our party three times in a row. Uh, but before that, we're gonna have to go and bench a uh, good old Slowpoke for the rest of the stream. Uh, actually, while we're in Fuchsia City, we might as well stock up on a few more Pokeballs. We also, I mean, this is actually, this actually works out pretty conveniently for us because now that we're here at the Pokemon Center, we can actually swap out Slowpoke for a Pokemon that knows Cut, which is going to be useful. It is uh, unbelievable that Cinnabon keeps getting use this light into the run, but it does know how to use cut, so there you go. Um, swap Tendori to the front. I'm a little bit surprised that none of the biker dudes that we've encountered thus far have actually had any uh, fighting type Pokemon in their parties. It's a little bit disappointing, to be honest, because Slowpoke would have a much, a much easier time with them if they just use fighting type Pokemon. And I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, top up the amount of uh, super potions I have in my bag as well. There we go. Uh, all right, looking good. I honestly don't know at all uh, what Pokemon we'll be able to capture in those two patches of grass that we're heading towards right now. I, I want to say that in one of those patches of grass, we'll be able to get Ditto. <clears throat> but... Again, I don't even know if I'm necessarily going to want to use Ditto uh, if we capture him. Let's find out. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's put let's put Tortellini at the front of the party because he can always put whoever he encounters to sleep. All right, let's go. God damn! How many of these bell sprouts do I have at this point? Jesus. Come on! Come on! Have me encounter somebody different. I understand that one of the big things about Pokemon Leaf Green is that Bellsprout and his evolutionary line is exclusive uh, to these games, but like you couldn't have you couldn't have inserted any other Pokemon into any of these routes. This is too fucking much. Uh, I'm going to use Nightshade. And... Yeah, I should probably... I, I, I guess that a Great Ball will probably be able to do it. God damn it. If I, if I encounter... If I encounter another Bellsprout, or, or like a Pokemon within the Bellsprout evolutionary line within the next route, uh, just adjacent to this one, I am gonna freaking rage. Uh, what am I calling this guy? Uh, I guess I can call this guy Nyoki. But seriously, like what the actual living mother of a hell?
Okay. Uh, let's see here. You know, I'll, I'll just swap Marshmallow to the front again. Yeah, I guess we have to, I guess we have to get through some, at least some trainers first before we can get to the wild Pokemon. Are there even any, actually, it's a good point. Are there even any <laughs> wild Pokemon that we can encounter on this route? Hmm. We go. I just need to survive this move and we'll be crit free. Can you can you imagine if it if, if it was a critical hit but it still only did one damage? Is that even possible? Uh, like, is there some sort of clause where like a critical hit must always at least do two damage? Sucks for you. I have a move that will always hit you. Unfortunately, I'm once again putting myself into crit realm whenever I use this attack. Come on. Ah, fuck. This isn't even my fault. Also, hold on a second. <laughs> Over the course of going back to uh, retrieve my Pokemon uh, from the Pokemon Center, I forgot that we needed to start one of these battles by swapping out our frontliner Pokemon three times. We'll have to remember after spinning the wheel this time. One, two, and three. Five push-ups. Uh, let's finish this battle and then we will do a little bit more yoga. Another, this is another biker trainer that doesn't have any fighting type Pokemon. I don't know what's going on. Ah, crit time. Hold on a sec. One of the one of the little spokes on the wheel is loose. Let me fix it. Ah, uh, come on. go. Alright. One, two, and three. No center, which means we cannot go to a Pokemon Center until we get another critical hit. Uh, Alright. First things first, we gotta do a little bit more yoga. So let's go ahead and let's bring in the proper uh, camera for that. Like last time, we'll be doing... Uh, Five reps of 10 seconds of the arm and leg stretches. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Last one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. All right. Let's go ahead. We need to find a nice little patch of grass where we'll be able to catch a Pokemon in this route. But where are where are they and where is that patch? Does it even exist? Um I'm gonna put Tendori back at the front of the party. Uh, is it possible? Are there no there's no poke oh no wait, hold on, hold up, hold up, hold up. There it is. The very end. Snuck away into a corner like that. Of course you require cut to access it, but it's A-OK -okay by us. Alright, guys. We really, 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 really need to make sure that we do not encounter another Bell Sprout or a Weeping Bell in here. We can encounter any other Pokemon. It can be a Pokemon that we have caught before, trained before, battled before. <laughs> Whatever, but it cannot be another Bell Sprout. It seriously cannot. It cannot. It cannot. It absolutely cannot. All right, who's it going to be? Oh, here we go. It's going to be someone powerful. Okay. All right. That's fine by me. We we don't have a, 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 any Pokemon from the Pidgey evolutionary line in our box waiting for us at home. So I'll take it. I'll take it. I mean, hey, at the very least, uh, you know, we'll be able to evolve Pidgey into a Pidgeotto and then a, a Pidgeotto into a Pidgeot, and they'll be able to actually uh, give us some more points in our Pokédex. Uh, we need to actually spin our prize wheel of criticality now that somebody crits, so let's go ahead and let's do that. And three. Hot sauce shot. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Before we can capture Pidgey, we gotta do some hot sauce. <sighs> I, I didn't think we were gonna get it at all on tonight's stream, but I guess I was mistaken. Ugh. At least none of it <laughs> accidentally spilled on my shirt. Ugh. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't ho Hopefully it doesn't produce a, a foul reaction when it meets up with the sugars from the eggs in my stomach Ugh. Ugh. All right, let's ball this Come to think of it, it's been a really long time since we've actually been able to catch a Pidgey for ourselves. Uh, what do we want to call this guy? Uh, you know what? Let's call this guy Sorbet. Uh, it's more of a, a, a name that you would think would be befitting of a an Ice-type Pokémon, but... I don't know, it just... <laughs> it, it struck me as appropriate for this here Pidgey. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. You know what? Just cause, just because we have the ability to do so right now at our disposal, I'm wondering if it actually would be worthwhile if we straight up just tried to see if we could visit Cinnabar Island. What I'll do is I still want to see if we can potentially capture a Starmie in Pallet Town, so I'll... I'll go ahead and I'll use like a repel and we'll skedaddle all the way down to Cinnabar Island and see if we can make it there. We're, we're kind of reaching at the end of our stream, so I feel like at least managing to visit Cinnabar Island would be a good way to end things. I'd be able to say, oh, hey, look, I actually managed to, you know, accomplish something before the end of the stream instead of just getting into all sorts of weird scrambles and skirmishes and capturing a Bellsprout for the 999th time. 
Uh, here we go. Max Repel. Perfect. Hmm. Lots of trainers hanging out here. You know what? I don't think it would hurt if we actually had a couple of battles. Let's go ahead. Let's give Tandori a chance to get some more experience. Uh, I don't believe... Uh, hello, On Air with Jer. I don't believe that you can still do Missing No. Um, as I recall, as I recall, um, Missing No, like, does exist in these games, but he exists in a much different form than the form that you know him from, from the Gen 1 games. The, the specifically, like, very glitchy-looking, kind of reverse L-shaped version of Missing No from those earlier games <laughs> does not exist in the Gen 3 games. I'm pretty certain that if you were to encounter Missing No in this game, one, I don't even think that Missing No, like, I think that the, at this point in the series, the name Missing No is retired. I'm pretty sure it's just like question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. And I'm pretty certain that the form that he takes on is like when you're scrolling through the Pokedex and you see one of those um, like question mark icons for a Pokemon that you haven't encountered yet. I'm pretty certain that's the form that uh, Missing No appears as in this gen. Um, I've not really done a lot of uh, like research into how it is that you could hypothetically encounter him. I want to say that the Palm Egg glitch, um, which you can perform much more easily in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, um, I'm pretty sure that's like one of the only ways that you can get access to Missing No that doesn't involve like specifically using like cheats or hacks. I, I, I'm pretty certain that like typically if you want to like just get Missing No as quickly as possible, you can just use cheat codes and hack codes and immediately plop them into your game. But if you want to get him legitimately, quote unquote legitimately, you would want to use the Pomme glitch from ruby sapphire and emerald at least that's that's my recollection i've not really like the thing about missing no right is everybody kind of loved missing no back in the day back in the original red and blue games because he was an easy and convenient way to get m multiples duplicates of your favorite items very quickly you could battle him once and you would immediately gain access to like 129 rare candies but that is not something that you gain access to uh, in any of these subsequent games in which Missing Nose doppelgangers appear, so people just didn't care about him anymore. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't take on Blaine just yet because we're going to need to actually take on the Pokemon Mansion. Oh, you know what? Now that we're here, now that we're at um, Cinnabar Island, we can actually revive... Uh, I want to say some of the fossil Pokemon that we have on hand. Give me a second. In any case, I was going to check out what these trainers have to say inside this building because there's a lot of interesting people around here. Man, a Raichu for an Electrode. That is a <laughs> shitty-ass trade. Yeah, the Venonat for a Tangela. That's also not a great trade either because you can, like, freely and very easily encounter Tangela's in that one route just south of Pallet Town. Metronome is a pretty fun move. I've seen some pretty fun challenges online that are like, oh man, can you beat uh, Pokemon Red entirely using Metronome? But I don't think I'm gonna I don't think I'm gonna put my faith in something like that. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, sorry, but I do not have a ponytail in my party. Um, I'm realizing right here and right now that me uh, giving this dude uh, my fossil means that I'm basically locking myself out of getting any other Pokemon in Cinnabar Island. I can surf along the edges of Cinnabar Island and use my rods, but I'm going to say right here and right now that I am 
restricted from doing so, uh, slash and or catching any Pokemon that I would obtain from doing so uh, because of the fossil that I'm about to obtain. Uh, let's go ahead and let's... I, I need to have a, a spot in my party open if I want access to one of the fossils, so I should probably uh, deposit somebody in one of the boxes. Uh, I don't need Beedrill right now. I don't, I don't need to really use Cut a whole lot now that I caught those two Pokemon that were hanging out in those little grasses, so... Goodbye to Beedrill. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, wh wh what's his name? Mr. Fuji used to live in the mansion. He was like one of the people experimenting on uh, Mew uh, for the purpose of creating Mewtwo. All right, I forgot that whole little bit, like that little kind of bit of backstory from the games. I um, part of the problem is that Mr. Fuji does appear in uh, the original Mewtwo Pokemon movie, but the way that he appears in those movies is like completely different from his appearance in uh, the Pokemon games. He has like a crazy hairdo and he has this weird backstory about a daughter that uh, like basically he's trying to clone and bring back to life. What do I want to call this guy? Hmm. I was I was thinking maybe I could call him Bugle after the, the chip because he kind of looks like a, a furled up Bugle but I feel like people might confuse that with the actual musical instrument. What do I want to call this dude? I could also also call him a Swiss roll, but that feels a little bit, yeah, a little bit obvious. I'm going to call this guy Donut. There we go. Uh, what nature is Donut? If this guy's like a modest nature, I might actually... Uh, lonely nature. That's like increased. I want to say it's like increased attack, but like decreased defense. Yeah, I don't know. I'll I'll, I'll hang on to him. It's a not bad Pokemon to have at my disposal, considering that he is pretty. He eventually gains access to some pretty decent moves, but yeah, I don't know. Okay, uh, you know what? We're getting pretty close to ending time. Let's go and let's fly back to Celadon City because uh, we still need to uh, speak to that man uh, that is resting across from that little pond that we previously had been unable to surf over. There we go. Just right over here. Soft boiled. Oh, I, I honestly had completely forgotten uh, the purpose of the man standing in front of me. I had completely, like, it, it had just sort of slipped my mind why it is that this guy's standing over here. Is there any Pokemon on my team that can learn soft boiled? No, none of these guys. Not even Cookie. I'm wondering. I'm wondering if Slowpoke or Slowbro can learn soft boiled. Actually, I'll have to. I'll have to keep in mind. I'll have to keep him in mind. All right, now where again do I get access to the T? I need to gain access to the T so that I can finally open up the routes to... Uh, what's it called? I can So that I can finally open up the uh, routes to get to Saffron City. Hmm, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to research how to get the tea off stream uh, while I'm still on stream. Uh, so like on some previous streams, I kind of went back and forth on what Pokemon I want to get for Celadon City that will become like my my one Pokemon for this city. And I was thinking, you know what? You know what? Like I could potentially use up a lot of my Pokemon. Uh, well, sorry, a lot of my cash to get tokens that I could eventually use to trade in for a Pokemon at the game corner. But like I am always like on the brink of 
go going completely broke, I think that it would actually be a much better use of my time if I were to gain access to the Eevee uh, at the top of the Celadon department store's uh, kind of hidden passageway and evolve him. I think that that would make for the much more worthwhile addition to my team uh, if I even decide to kind of use him. Um, give me a second. I think I actually might need to have somebody not on my party for me to gain access to him. I, For whatever reason, I thought that I had to use Cut to access the behind area of the building, but I think I was mistaken. Now, I know you're probably wondering, so what Pokemon are you going to evolve Eevee into? I've given it some thought. Um, it's definitely not going to be Vaporeon, because I already have plenty of Water-type Pokemon on my team to go around. Uh, obviously, in the past, I used to have Gyarados on my team. Even without Gyarados, I have a pretty sizable, important Water-type Pokemon in the form of the one and only Blastoise. Now... I could potentially gain access to a Jolteon. Um, but the thing about Jolteon is like, I feel like Jolteon really, truly would have been incredibly useful. What do we want to call this guy? Um, let's call this guy... Uh, hmm. Hmm. Do, 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 do. What if I call this guy Barbecue? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to call him Barbecue. Let's keep it short and sweet. The thing about getting Jolteon is really, I feel like Jolteon would have been most useful if I had not yet battled uh, Lieutenant Surge yet, because Lieutenant Surge, uh, you know, had access to many an electric type move, and it would have been convenient to battle him with a Pokemon that has Volt Absorb. But now that Lieutenant Surge is behind us, I feel like using a Jolteon is not all that critical, which brings me to Flareon. Flareon is kind of a a ridiculed Pokemon within the uh, kind of Pokemon series. It, it's kind of often regarded as the kind of most unpopular and most uninteresting of the evolutions. There, there's like a meme about how like it's like the one evolution, the one fully evolved fire type Pokemon that doesn't gain access to Solar Beam. <laughs> But in a weird way, I feel like that actually kind of motivates me to actually want to use him because that actually means that potentially we have a little bit more of a uh, that potentially like actually presents a little bit more of a challenge for me. Hold on a sec. I actually uh, I don't have enough money yet uh, to be able to purchase my Firestone. So, yeah, I think that because it will make for a more. Uh, interesting challenge. It would actually be more worthwhile if I would teach Eevee uh, how to become a Flareon instead. I do just want to check something real quick because I remember many of the Eevee illusions um, being, you know, uh, belonging to those kind of rare breeds of Pokemon that don't really learn a whole lot of moves after you level them up. So I just want to check real quick. Oh no, no, I was mistaken. After I after I evolve him, he learns plenty of moves while leveling up. Alright, well it's decided. I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to evolve my Eevee into a Flareon. And that will make for a, I think, fantastic conclusion to the stream. I know some people are yelling at the stream right now, what the fuck are you doing evolving your Eevee into a Flareon? But Personally, I think that it will make for the most fun content that I possibly could get out of this EV. More than that, however, like, and I previously talked about this in some of my previous streams, I really was looking forward towards having, like, one Fire-type Pokémon, one Grass-type Pokémon, and at least one Water-type Pokémon on my team. And now that I have Flareon, I potentially can do that. So, let's see here. I, I have a feeling, I get the sense that Marshmallow or Tenduri probably don't have that much longer for this world. So, and we, we also do have, um, what, what, what's his face? Slowpoke uh, in the Pokemon box. So it's looking like our final team is going to be Blueberry, Tortellini, Barbecue, Cookie, uh, Mochi the Storlax, and then either... 
tandoori or marshmallow or maybe maybe i'll catch some something at the pokemon mansion and replace one of them with that all right well until then until we determine exactly what our final team is going to look like going into the final few gym battles i'd like to thank everybody for tuning into tonight's stream i remember as always that you can catch these broadcasts live on twitch.tv slash cozy bear live every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. EST, and after the fact, on YouTube, every Wednesday and Saturday at 3 p.m. EST. Uh, and of course, remember, as always, that you can also catch me on Twitter, at Alex Cozina, if the tweets and the twits are more your speed. My name's Alexander Cozina, aka Cozy Bear, and I'd like to wish you all a good night.